The Atlanta Falcons, I mean, they were a consensus division winner. The, our most improve, improved team failed the holes. Chuck them in playoff team, right? Because like, they're the division winner for a reason. We uh, are, have so much faith in the Falcons with their amazing offseason that we've made a full-blown Cinderella run video about them. So I 100% agree with you. Today, we are putting every NFL team onto our tier list. We only have one rule, which is we must agree on which tier each team goes to. The top tier is Super Bowl favorites. Then we have our playoff locks. Next one is teams that will fight for the wild card. After that, we have the mid teams. Then we have the bad but not bad enough tier. These teams are awful but won't get the number one overall pick. Finally, we have the contenders for the first overall pick. All right, let's just get the Super Bowl favorites out of the way. I think it's just fair to put one from each conference. Just put last year's matchup in there again. The Kansas City Chiefs, the San Francisco 49ers. Um, the Chiefs got better somehow and they won a Super Bowl last year, the last two years. And then the 49ers, I think you agreed, they're top to bottom, one of the best teams across the NFL, period. Yeah, like, like, no weaknesses. As simple as this, barring injuries, and honestly right now is preseason, so we don't know any injuries. These two are the two of the best teams in the NFL. Period, yeah. Just, just cap it there. They're going to get their shine throughout the season from us and everybody in the media but anyways. We're going to switch to good, to stinkers. And uh, the number one pick contention is going to go to the Giants, Panthers, and the Patriots. No particular order. They all just are really bad. And the Panthers coming off a bad year. Giants, obviously, bad year. And Patriots, we're expecting them to have a bad year. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think Bryce Young does get better. Giants, don't believe in Daniel Jones, period. The Patriots can be a sneaky team in the second, the next year. But um, they're starting the year with Jacoby Brissett. I just feel like they need that one more year. Uh, to figure things out, then they could probably move on their way up. They are not the same old lines anymore because now they are perennial playoff team, playoff lock, and they should be a playoff lock for the foreseeable future. Joining them in that list is last year's AFC runner-up and a hopefully healthy Bengals team. So first off, the lines quickly, like you said, with the Falcons Cinderella run, we dropped a whole video of why they'll make it to the Super Bowl and potentially win it. But yeah, like they just upgraded year after year ever since they got Dan Campbell in and figured their stuff out. Baltimore Ravens, listen, the playoffs is when we'll truly test them. I still think, you know, adding Derrick Henry, that backfield is going to be insane with them. And then the Cincinnati Bengals, again, we're basing off this on health because there's no point of not basing it on health unless we know they're missing time, like Nick Chubb, for example. But yeah, Joe Burrow is still one of the top five quarterbacks in the league. Yes, there's question marks about Jamar Chase availability. I'm, I think we both, I could say this for you as well, we believe he will end up playing soon because I think it'll be soon, stupid very, if he doesn't. Yeah, very soon. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, as long as they're healthy, they have all three teams have good quarterbacks. All three teams have a solid offense, and uh, they should they all play off locks in our opinion. But let's talk about a non playoff lock, and they are mediocre at best, which is the New Orleans Saints. And uh, coming into last season, we had high expectations for the Saints because of a weak division and the additions they made. Their car coming off a good year, but that was not the case. Car lost or. Locker room early. Alave is probably the only best thing there next to Alvin Kamara on the offensive side. Offensive, at least. Yeah. yeah. Defensively, they're good. Yeah. So, yeah, I have nothing more to add there. Like, I, I feel like this is going to be the drop off from them. And finally, they will get a new head coach next year, not named Dennis Allen. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. That's them. also the big that's thing. That's the other reason why we have him down there. All right. All right so, um, we, we have a new tier here. Bad, but not bad enough. And that's the best way to describe the Broncos, meaning that these guys are going to be really bad, but they're not garbage. Like, Let's be honest, like so, the other three teams below. So like, <laughs> yes, like we were considering them down there for sure. I, I don't know. For me, they have Sean Payton. They got rid of Russell Wilson. He got his guy in Bo Nix. I'm not saying he's going to be like Russell Wilson, Seattle, but or his version of Drew Brees, for example. I just, I don't know. I, I like their pieces on the offense. I like Bo Nix. I'm not saying he's he's going to come in and just... Good preseason. Yeah, like, I'm not saying he's going to come in and be like Kayla Williams, for example, off the bat, but he had a really good college run, especially in Oregon the last two years there. Yes, I won't be surprised if they go up a tier or down a tier, but so middle, mediocre at best is uh, the best spot. <laughs> sorry, not mediocre, sorry. The bad, but not bad enough. Bad, but not bad enough. Yes. That, that, that might be the best way to describe Sam Darnold and the Minnesota Vikings, right? Because you lost Kirk Cousins. But you still somehow have the best wide receiver in football, a top five, top 10 tight end who's going to come back from injury. Decent online, Kevin O'Connell coaching. You're just not going to suck that much compared to um, the teams below him, in my opinion. Even with J.J. McCarthy, oh, they were still going to be in this tier because, you know, J.J. McCarthy, we, there were question marks him coming out of the draft as well. Um, like you said, and then on top of that, you forgot to mention Aaron Jones is a really good running back when healthy as well. Um, next up, 
the LA Rams for me are a potential wild card. I think you just add in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as well. Yeah. So the LA Rams first. Um, I still think they're a good team. Yes, they lost Raheem Morris to the Falcons uh, for their uh, coaching spot there, and then they lose obviously the best defensive player we have seen in a long time since Lawrence Taylor, arguably, and Aaron Donald. So there's gonna there's gonna be uh, holes to figure out. But last year they were healthy. They were this. You know, some of their young guys surprised. I like their pick with Jared Verse, I believe it was, as well. So I feel like they'll still, you know, challenge that second spot in the NFC West and that wild card spot in the uh, overall NFC. I agree with everything you said about the Rams. So I'm going to move on to the Buccaneers. And uh, one reason is that they have chemistry and they have continuity. The biggest question mark for the Bucs is can Baker do it again? Because he tends to be a quarterback that's one year good, one year bad. But overall, offensively, defensively, they are back to get together. Second question mark is... Dave Canales is not there, yeah, and uh, how exactly. they're gonna how they're gonna fill that void. But overall, I think the continuity and just them being back together is gonna be a big reason why they'll have a wild card shout. Mike Evans, a thousand plus yard receiver, uh, oh, again and again. There. Here is the thing we differed a little bit, but it's my turn here. Put them in potential wild card. It's the Chicago Bears. I am high on them more than you for sure. If people haven't seen our um. Uh, playoff team's predictions here. I have them actually going into the wild card. I just believe that they put all the right pieces around Caleb Williams that they failed to do with Justin Fields. And um, they, oh yes, their O-line is, might not be like top tier yet, but they're, it's better than the one they had before. Uh, Keenan Allen pickup, partnering with DJ Moore, uh, DJ Moore down there. Yes, I, they could add a little bit more pieces defensively, but I, I don't hate it. Let's just say yeah, that. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate the shout either. Right? I was obviously teeter-tottering between mediocre at best, but a good young squad that should be up and coming. Uh, pump the brakes on Caleb Williams a little bit, but that's probably the biggest question mark they have on the offensive side, which is pretty good because he's a number one pick. Uh, the other thing is defensively, I'm not really fully convinced by them as well. All right, the Philadelphia Eagles, chuck them in playoff team, right? Like, yes, very brutal end to the year last year. However, both of our division locks again. I like their pieces on offense, Saquon Barkley edition especially. Let's see what Kellen Moore does, right? At the end of the day, then that's what matters. Touching on them defensively, they improved their secondary with draft picks and getting their guy, CJ Garner-Johnson, back, <laughs> yeah. which is obviously a big piece. And they have, like, the Georgia professional Georgia team, basically. Georgia's yeah. their B team. Eagles are the A team. I think they should be back in the hunt for sure. But let's transition to a bad but not bad enough team, Raiders. And the biggest, this is the best way to describe it. Gardner Minshew is bad without Shane Steichen. That's, but their defense is not bad. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why they're just in this tier. I think I think this tier is made for the Raiders in terms of how their team's laid out on paper. Good news for them. They don't need to be a bottom three uh, with next year's draft. So, But yeah, I agree with everything. Moving on. The Green Bay Packers... Depending on who you ask, let's just I'm gonna put him on potential wild card. I'm gonna pump the brakes a little bit on Jordan Love to repeat what he did, even though I believe he will. Um I just feel like yeah, like if the Rams are there, you gotta match them up together because I feel like and, and we put the Bears there as well. I so feel, I don't think they're a lock. I feel like they're ahead of the Bears. I I genuinely I could with. I genuinely could argue them going to a playoff team just because, you know, they're younger, they're they have experience now, right? They'll be coming back into it. I I would personally put them in playoff team, but we're going to have to find a way to see this together. The reason why I have them in wild card... I feel like they're more closer to the Lions than they are to the Bears, in my opinion. Which is fair, but then um, the Bears is because, like, you know, that's the bottom end of that tier. I have them on the same ranking as the Rams, though. Yeah, if you want to look at that's, that that's way. That's the way that's I'm fair. looking at it. I, I don't hate I it. I think the Lions are... Even though it's a tough division, I think the Lions are still, like, a tier. I don't hate it. Though. I'll probably just go like this. Just to, yeah, I mean, we're my, not really ranking... For, my, for my sanity. <laughs> uh, bad, but not bad enough. But a fun team. Fun team. The Commanders. Jaden Daniels will see what he could do. Hope he could stay healthy and not get injured. Overall, there are a lot of holes on this team so far. They, they added a lot of veteran presence to it. And with Dan Quinn being one one of them, but being him being the head coach, but overall, they're just a few years away. Um, Speaking of few years away, <laughs> exactly. So put Arizona Cardinals there. Like, listen, I might, I want to argue mediocre at best, but I'm not gonna put them there because of the Marvin Harrison Jr. addition. I think that addition alone will propel them as long as Kyler Murray is healthy. That's the key there. But like you said, there are still some holes to fill there. Their O line is getting better, whether it be through the draft or free agency. Um, another fun team, right? Like, obviously, we could have another tier of like young, but young but fun, or like bad but fun. However you want to put it, uh, both those teams will be there. So nothing much to add there. Steelers are mediocre at best. The best way to look at it is this. Their defense is playoff team. Their offense is bad, but not bad enough. So what did that mean? In the middle, mediocre at best. Yeah, I mean, 
let's see what Russell Wilson and Arthur Smith and Justin, whoever Justin Fields decide to do. So far, the preseason hasn't been the greatest. Um, listen, they'll still find a way to be nine and eight, though. Miami Dolphins. I'm putting them in playoff team because they're my division winner <laughs> at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. I didn't have him as a division winner when we did our division predictions, but I I could see where you're definitely coming from just because that whole East they made the playoffs last year. East is a tough tough one to predict for sure, but with Tua and Tyreek and Waddle and like the speed, yeah, right, they they should they should be fine. I agree with playoff team. Uh, the next one potential wild card is the Buffalo Bills, a roster that is worse on paper but could be better through performance wise because of what Joe Brady and James Cook were able to. Do to help out Josh Allen. Yeah, defensively though, they lost a lot of pieces. Matt Milano is now injured to start the year at least. So, yeah, um, I'm I'm putting them on a wild card. I'm not saying they'll miss up. Like I can't guarantee a playoff spot for them. Like I'm more confident in the Dolphins than I am with the um, Bills. That's just me. All right, when you think of mediocre, I think of Seattle, right? And here's a reason why: Geno Smith, mediocre. Their lines, offensive and defensive lines, mediocre, maybe even bad. Their weapons, really good. So. Yeah. I think mid is the best way to describe, describe the Seahawks. They do have the potential of being in the pl- a playoff team, but overall, I'm just not buying it or what I'm seeing on the roster right now. Yeah, like like exactly what you said. If they had fixed their O-line and D-line, I would have easily put them oh, in the wild card. Yeah, 100%. I love their weapons. If Geno's healthy, they, okay, here's the thing. We don't know what to expect from them because they're officially out of the Pete Carroll era. Mike McDonald did amazing with the Ravens defense last year. Uh, so I have faith in him to fix that defensive side of the ball. Offensively, we'll see what the new offensive coordinator does, but yeah, but for now, like I can't, I, yeah, it's like exactly what you said. Cleveland Browns, tough to describe. Initially, I'll go potential wild card, and that's if we get a good, Desha- good Deshaun Watson. If we get a bad Deshaun Watson, I'm bumping him down to bad, but not bad so enough. Here's the uh, thing. Not bad. I mean, mediocre at best. Here's the thing: bad Deshaun Watson is mediocre. Mixed in with Joe Flacco last year, still got to them to, to the playoffs. I'm believing. In a Deshaun Watson um, bump. He, need, he needed a 39-year-old to save him. <laughs> yeah, true. Listen, if he has a great year, they're up there. Right? Yeah, up great year. If he has a good year, so the, the he's question, here. The question mark is Deshaun Watson. Because of that, I still think he's still a capable quarterback in this league, a starting qual- caliber. Um, is he going to find uh, Houston days, or is he going to be the post-massage era of uh, Deshaun I think he, I think he's a little bit too relaxed right now. So I, I think they're there. Their defense is elite. Yeah. And uh, I like their weapons. I'll just say this much. One last thing with the Browns. They're going to have to figure it out, especially the first four weeks, because they will not have Nick Chubb. But a team that's jumped into Super Bowl contendership almost for me, but I'm not going to put them there. I'm going to put them as a playoff team right now, is the Houston Texans. And w- main reason is CJ Stroud's incredible rookie season and the pieces they added. My question mark was uh, is going to be, is there going to be a sophomore slump? Obviously, we clearly do not believe in that. I agree with you 100%. I like their additions both offensively with Stefan Diggs. Yes, yes, he can be a diva at times. But, and then, but mainly on the defensive side, they added an elite pass rusher to partner Will Anderson. And they're already scary last year. Yeah, um, they should be a playoff team. They should have the Detroit Lions jump. The Cowboys. You got to put them in playoff team at the end of the day. Like Their defense is way too elite. Um, their question mark, and then Dak Prescott's a really good, uh, he's an MVP caliber quarterback, regular season award, right? So because of that, their question mark, obviously we're projecting the playoffs. They're not going to, again, um, if they're going to be, they're a lock in the playoff team. I think there's a two horse race and they're one of the top four ish teams in that, um, top four or five teams in that, uh, conference. So we got the chargers and I'm gonna put them at mediocre at best. Only reason why is because of Justin Herbert and, uh, Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, this is where we kind of teetered a little bit. The more I look at this team ever since we did the rankings, this is the first division we did, right? And we had them second, yeah. but then it was like a lowly second type thing. Um, I, I think Jim Harbaugh is going to bring the identity. Justin Herbert's healthy to start the year. Lad McConkie has a really good training count. Yes, there's question marks on Quentin Johnson, but I feel like their identity is obviously, you know, power running. And then, you know, Justin Herbert, in my opinion, is still a top five quarterback um, when healthy. He should be able to lead this, um, I mean, put them above the teams that we have it bad, but not bad enough. I'm going to join in on that and put the Tennessee Titans there. And they are a bad, but not bad enough team. But they just managed to pull together one of the best off seasons 
in like recent memory. Yeah, like, <laughs> like defense in, in terms of Tennessee franchise history. Just start off with defense, right? Like you traded for Legereus Need. Yes, you paid him, but he's Legereus Need, right? Like I know the Chiefs are gonna miss him in, when it comes to playoff runs, especially. And then on top of that, they added um, Quandre Diggs. Like then they you, added some vet pieces. Then there. you flipped the offensive side, and they're gonna help out Will Levis. And they drafted another O lineman two years in a row, and uh, they added Calvin Ridley as well, another weapon. So. Yeah, Derek it just, Henry the, the, will be a huge loss. He'll be a huge loss, but again, the question mark does fall to Will Levis. And, and the, whatever the uh, Brian Callahan played. Yeah, and will be. that will determine their season. Jets, I have them as my division winner, so I'm going to put them in playoff yeah, team. Yeah, let me fair. Uh, um, again, I'm just hoping for a healthy Aaron Rodgers, and if he's healthy, that means Garrett Wilson should be really good. popping Brees off. Brees Hall should be really good. They have Mike Williams, solid second option, and Brees Hall has always been good, and their O-line, they added Tyrone Smith and Olu Fishanu, so... Their O line should be improved, and hopefully he's not tearing his Achilles a weekend. These even, last, though, even though the storyline is kind of like yeah. <laughs> showing that he might do it again. <laughs> but yeah, because he's playing Leonard Floyd again, right? So that's Leonard the Floyd thing. Monday Night Football at MetLife. Exactly, <laughs> but no. Um, for me, the last two teams, obviously one of them is our squad. We'll leave them there for now. On uh, Jacksonville, uh, potential wild card resident. Last year, Trevor Lawrence finally gets hurt. He was playing injured. It was clearly um, we could clearly tell. Yes, they lost Calvin Ridley. They lost a couple of pieces there. They drafted Brian Thomas Jr. Um, so for me, and they have Travis Etienne, I still think they'll be a play in the playoff hunt the whole entire year. Um, and then Chuck and Indianapolis in there too, because exactly what I said for them is the same, especially with the surprise run they had last year. So the best way like to clarify for you guys, potential wild card does not mean that these guys are a playoff team. Yes. Right? They're, they're a potential playoff team. Obviously, these guys are our locks. Obviously, these two are our locks. So like a couple of these teams are going to make it for us. Uh, quick comment on the Jaguars. Again, they're just... Gonna, they're going to need to refine their mojo because they definitely lost that last year. And I feel like uh, they've done enough in terms of offensively to, to help them out. The Indianapolis Colts are on the opposite end. They're trying to like, they're, they're, they're trying to gain their mojo, right? Trying to figure out who they are. And they have the potential of doing that with Anthony Richardson, the young offensive weapons they added. Uh, secondary is a question defensively, but overall, these guys are just trying to find their way. And the question mark does just fall on Anthony Richardson. And if, again... If he's good, they should be a playoff team. The sole reason we also have him there is because Shane Steichen is a genius. Oh, yeah. Well. Like, look what he did last year with Gardner Minshew. But, yeah, so this is our tier list. Do you, I, I like it. I like I like the tier list. Yeah, so like comment you, what comment down below what you guys think. Where do you guys would adjust uh, things? Obviously, we know some of you guys are not going to like some of these picks here. I know Steelers fans are probably thinking that right now. But, yeah, so this is our official tier list. We're here. The NFL season is back. We're excited, so we hope you guys enjoy the season as well. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace.